वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय सेल्फ उज्जवल बोरो दिस इज द सेकंड पार्ट लेक्चर्स ऑन कम्युनिकेशन इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द मीनिंग ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स कम्युनिकेशन इन दिस लेक्चर्स आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिफरेंट थ्योरीज related to communication so let's discuss about the introduction to communication theory purpose of communication theory communication theory mainly helps us to understand how communication works in various contexts allowing us to predict outcome and improve communication strategies for example semiotic the theory help us understand how signs and symbols create meaning like emojis clarifying emotions in text messages then functions of theories the communication theories provide frameworks that guide the study and understanding of communication helping researchers and practitioners predict and control communicative behavior basically communication theories provide frameworks by offering structure and models and concepts that explain how communication process works the theory helps identify key components relationships and influences within communications allowing researchers to analyze predict and improve communication practices systematically historical context about communication theories communication theories have evolved from ancient rhetoric theory focusing on uh, persuasive speech to encompass various modern forms of digital and mass communication persuasive speech is nothing but it is the use of words to convince or influence others then definitions of theory <coughs> theories provide a conceptual understanding for complex process and phenomena by summarizing and explaining their essential aspects Frameworks they offer structured ways to interpret events, behavior, and interactions, guiding research and practical applications. Evolving nature theories are not static; they evolve as new insights and research findings emerge. We must continually refine our understanding of subjects. Then, functions of communication theories. Uh, first one is understanding and then guidance and then prediction in social sense theory help us comprehend complex communication process and phenomena providing a deeper insight into how communication works then guidance they offer directions for studying communication behavior and outcomes guiding research and practical applications then prediction theory enable us to predict and control communication signs Mimics helping to anticipate outcomes and manage interactions effectively, and then social sense. They provide frameworks for challenging and improving social and cultural realities, promoting positive sense through better communication practices. And then evolution of communication theory. Early foundations communication theory began with the study of rhetoric and persuasion in ancient Greece. focusing on effective public speaking i have already discussed about this and then technological advance the invention of telegraph telephone and radio in the 19 and early 20th century sparked significant advancement in communication studies and then information theory claude shannon work in the 1940s introduced key concepts such as and information entropy and sensitivity in the messages laying the ground for modern communication theory and contemporary development today's communication theories encompass digital communication social media and the impact of mass media on society the first one is rhetorical theory rhetorical theory focuses on the art of persuasion and effective public speaking historical background it originates In ancient Greece, with key figures like Aristotle and Plato, application 
rhetorical theory is used in various fields including public speaking, legal arguments, political discourse. The principles of rhetorical theory extends to media analysis, advertising, and digital communication where persuasion remains a key component. I have given this mind map. The mind map illustrates the rhetorical theory of communication, highlighting essential elements such as ethos, logos, pathos. Ethos means credibility, pathos means emotion, logos means logic, kairos, timing, audience message, and medium. Each component plays a crucial role in crafting persuasive communication. The, this sequence diagram illustrates the step-by-step -step process involved in the rhetorical theory of communication. This is the sender and this is the audience. First, sender define the purpose. The sender begins by identifying, identifying the main purpose of communication. This involves understanding what the sender aims to achieve with the message such as informing, persuading, entertaining, or instructing the audience. And then analyze the audience. The sender conducts an analysis of audience to understand their needs, expectations, values, and characteristics. This step is crucial to tailor the message in a way that resonates with the audience and meets their expectations. Then develop the message based on the purpose an audience analyzes the sender crafts the message. This uh, involves organizing content, selecting appropriate language and tone and ensuring the message is clear and coherent. And then select the medium. The sender shows the most effective medium for delivering the messages. This could be written, oral, presentation, visual, infographic, video or a combination of this. Then apply rhetorical strategies like ethos, pathos, and logos. Ethos is nothing but establishing credibility and trustworthiness, and pathos appealing to the emotions of the audience. And then logos is the using logical argument, logical argument, and evidence to support the messages. Then deliver the messages uh, by the sender to audience. The sender communicates the message to the audience through the selected medium. Effective delivery ensures that the message is received and understood as intended. Then uh, evaluate the impact. After the message is delivered, the sender evaluates its impact on the audience. This involves gathering feedback, assessing whether the communication objectives were met, and making adjustments for future communication if necessary. So mainly rhetorical theory of communication was given by uh, Aristotle and Chicago. This is related to public speaking and then semiotic theory. Semiotic theory studies science and symbols fundamental elements of communication uh, origin. The theory is rooted in the work of linguistics Ferdinand D. Chosori and Charles Sanders ISC. And key concepts include signifier, signified, and the relationship between them. Then, application. Uh, similar theory is widely used in field such as linguistics, media studies, and cultural analysis helping to decode the meaning of various signs and symbols in communication. The similar theory communication developed by Ferdinand de Sosari and Charlie Sanders focuses on how signs and symbols create meaning. In this theory, a sign consists of signify the form of the sign and signify the concept it represents. Let's assume in a something about a traditional gamosa. The gamusa itself, the signifier, is a piece of cloth, but it signifies respect. Assam identifies, Assam is 
people identify and cultural pride the signify when someone presents a gamusa to a guest it communicates respect and honor without words again let's assume consider a behuda performance the dance moves signifies convey joy celebrations and the arrival of spring signify its gestures and rhythm is a sign and the terrace cultural meaning here signifier is the bihu dance moves and the signify is the joy celebration as some cultural heritage so <clears throat> in summary we can say that thematic theory help us understand how everyday items and actions like the gamusa or bihu dance carry deep cultural meaning in the context of assam it shows how signs and symbols communicate important cultural values and identities making them powerful tools for preserving and expressing our heritage then phenological theory of communication this theory mainly focuses on personal experience and subjective experience and how individual perceive and make sense of all around them it emphasizes understanding and communication from the perspective of the individual involved include theories like like Karl Roger Abraham Maslow core concepts emphasize self actualization personal growth and the intake of perceptions on communication used in psychology counseling and interpersonal communication so let's assume uh, to understand this phenomenal phenomenological theory of communication in assam consider the experience of sitting by the brahmaputra river during sunset this sitting moment can evoke different feelings and thoughts in each person one might feel a deep connection to nature while another might reflect one personal memory now again imagine two friends sitting by the brahmaputra watching the sunset Uh, one feels a sense of peace and contentment while the other feels nostalgic remembering childhood days when near the river their conversation reflects this personal experience face and perception their personal experience is friends unique feelings and thoughts and communication sharing these feelings and creating a deeper understanding of each other's perspective so in summary we can say that the phenomenological theory of communication helps us appreciate how personal experiences shape our communication in the context of assam this means understanding how individual moments like watching a sunset by the brahmaputra can lead to meaningful conversations that uh, reveal our deepest thoughts and emotions the next theory is cybernetic theory so definition Uh, views communication as a systematic information processing and control this was given by the uh, norbert winner in 1940 core concept included feedback loop information processing and control mechanisms then applications of this theory used in system theory artificial intelligence and organizational communication the cybernetic theory of communication developed by norbert winner in 1940 views communication as a system of transmitting information between a sender and a receiver through feedback loop it focuses on how messages are sent received and how feedback is used to improve communication core concepts like feedback loop feedback loop in the context of cybernetic theory of communication refer to the process who, where a system output is feedback into the system as input to adjust and improve communication for example a customer service chatbot updating its responses based on user interactions to provide more accurate answers then information processing information processing in the context of cybernetic theory refers to how a system takes in data analyzes it and uses the feedback to make adjustment for example a self driving car analyzing traffic data to navigate and adjust its route in real time then control mechanism a control mechanism refers to a process that regulates and adjusts a system behavior 
to accept desired outcomes. For example, an email filter automatically sorting incoming messages into folder to manage and streamline communications efficiently. To understand the cybernetic theory of communications, let uh, consider a farmer in Assam receiving a weather alert about an upcoming storm. The alert helps farmers prepare and protect their crops after the storm. The farmer provides feedback on the accuracy of the alert. This feedback helps the weather service define their future alert. Here, message is weather alert and then farmer is the receiver in feedback. Farmer responds about the alert accuracy. So in summary, we can say that the cybernetic theory of communication helps us understand the flow of information and the importance of feedback in improving communication. Next, socio-psychological theory. The socio-psychological theory of communication is influenced by George Herbert Smith and Herbert Bloomer emphasize how social interactions and individual psychology affect communication. Smith introduced the idea of the self and developing through social interactions, while Bloomer coined symbolic interactionalism highlighting how people create and interpret meaning through interaction. Here, socio-psychological refers to the study of how social interactions and social context influence individual thoughts, emotions, and behavior. It combines principles from both sociology and psychology to understand how people's mental processes and behaviors are shaped by their social environment. Core concepts social interaction, personal identity, and social influence on communication. So here, yeah, social interaction refers to the exchanges between individuals that have their self concepts and communication behavior. For example, a student in Assam gaining confidence and cultural identity through participating in Bihu dance practices with peers and elders. And personal identity, personal identity refers to an individual self concept shaped by social interactions and experience. For example, a young Assamese person developing a strong cultural identity and sense of self for regular participation in traditional Bihu festivals and community events. And social influence, social influence uh, refers to how individuals' behavior and communications are shaped by expectations, norms, and feedback of their Social environment, for example, a student in Assam choosing a speech, Assam is more often at school due to encouragement and approval from peers and teachers. An application, it can be applied in social psychology, for example, research on how peer influence affects teenager attitude towards smoking and communication studies, studying how social media affects the communication patterns and self-esteem of young adults in behavioral science, developing programs to encourage healthy eating by leveraging family and community support system. In summary, we can say that the socio-psychological theory of communication helps us understand how personal and social sectors serve communication. Then, socio-cultural theory of communication. Uh, definitions explore how cultures and social structures influence communication and individual development. The socio-cultural theory of communication explores how social and cultural sectors influence the way individuals communicate. This theory poses that communication is not just about exchanging information, but is deeply embedded in the cultural and social context in which people live. Lev Vygotsky, Vygotsky he was a Russian Psychology, a theory of cognitive development, emphasized that children learn best through social interactions with their cultural context. Here, yeah, cognitive development is nothing but the process by which a person learn to think, understand, and process information as they grow. To understand uh, this theory, let's assume in the context of Assam, consider how children learn to perform Bihudan. They don't learn 
it in isolation but by interacting with elders and peers who show the them the step it is core concepts like a zone of proximal development and social interaction cultural tools and scaffolding so zone of proximal development is a task a child can do with guidance like learning behavior steps with help and scaffolding support provided by others like an elder dancer demonstrating moves on and offering tips then cultural tools is nothing but tools like language and symbols such as specific dance terms rhythms which aid learning let's take another example to understand this socio cultural theory of communication theme of a child learning to make pitha during bihu the mother shows how to mix ingredients and explains the process the child listens watches and then tries making pitha with guidance here social interaction the child learns the recipe and it cultural significance through interactions with his mother and then cultural tools the recipe and techniques are cultural tools here yes. the mother guidance uh, scaffolding health scaffolding is the mother guidance helps the child for with their zone of proximal development until they can make pitha independently bhagwatki theory shows that learning is deeply rooted in social interactions and cultural this is making it relevant so application using education we can apply it in in the theory in education how we can use this socio cultural theory in education in the study of education cultural studies and a developmental psychology in education a teacher in assam for example A teacher in Assam might use local folk tales and traditional music to teach language and moral lessons, making learning culturally relevant and engaging. Students discuss these stories in groups, enhancing their understanding for social interaction. Then, in cultural studies, researchers might study how the Bihu dance in Assam communicates cultural values and social roles, analyzing the dances, language, and symbols to understand its significance. In developmental psychology. might observe how children in assam learn social norms through participation in community festivals highlighting the role of cultural practices in cognitive and social development by integrating the social cultural theory of communication this field can better appreciate the interplay between social interactions cultural context and individual development and then critical theory <coughs> so the critical theory of communication developed by frankfurt school thinkers like max fortimer and theodor adorno explores how communication is influenced by power structure capitalism and media control they argue that mass mass media often perpetuate dominant ideologies marginalizing alternative viewpoints and reinforce in social inequality let's take an example to understand this critical theory consider a village in assam where a grassroots movement is trying to bring attention to environmental issues caused by tea plantations the mainstream media influences by powerful plantation owners might downplay this concern critical theory would analyze this media bias revealing how economic and political influences communication and public perception by using the critical theory of communication so we can critically examine and challenge media practices and pocketing for more equitable and inclusive communication that represents all voices especially those marginalized communities so here core, core concepts are analysis culture media and communications to understand and challenge social injustice applications of this theory include use in media studies cultural studies social science to promote social challenge and then general system theory 
The general system theory of commission developed by Loudin, Bond, Bartel, and C focuses on system dynamics, feedback loop, and the interdependence of components. It suggests that in any system, all parts interact dynamically and effective communication is crucial for maintaining balance and achieving. To understand this, let's assume in a college library, various components like librarians, students, and administrative staff interact to ensure smooth operations. System dynamics involves this continuous interaction. Feedback loops occur when students provide feedback about library services which librarians use to make improve improvements. The interdependence of components means that if the cataloging system fails, it affects how librarians assist students and how students find books. Again, imagine students requesting more study space. Librarians collect this feedback and communicate it to the administration, which then reallocate resources to create more study areas. This feedback loop helps improve library services if the IT information technology system goes down librarians can't access the catalog affecting students ability to find resources showing interdependence here system dynamics is the ongoing interaction between librarians students and staff and then feedback loop is the student feedback leading to service improvement and then interdependence is the all components relying on each other for smooth library operation In summary, we can say that Loudin Bond Wattel Lance's general th system theory of communications illustrates how system dynamics, feedback loops, and interdependence ensure effective functioning in college library. This is uh, seen in the continuous interaction, feedback, driving improvements, and the interconnected rules of librarian students and students. And then next, information theory. Information theory of communication introduced by Claude Shannon in the year of 1940. He was regarded as he was also regarded as the father of information theory. It mainly studies the quantification, storage, communications of information, includes key concepts like information entropy, data compression, cell capacity. It is used in telecommunications, data science, and computer science. Here, information entropy measures the unpredictability in MSS. Think of it as guessing a trained random password. A highly random password has a high entropy. Similarly, a digital message with many possible variations has high entropy. Data compression is nothing but involves reducing in the size of digital message without losing its meaning imagine sending a photo via email compression techniques string the file size making it quicker to send and receive like zipping a file then channel capacity is the maximum amount of information that can be sent over a digital channel without errors for example consider your home wi-fi the higher the channel capacity the more data you can stream without buffering Applications of this theory we can use in telecommunications, data science, and computer science. And then, communication theory of mass media. This theory explores how mass media influences and sets uh, public perceptions and behavior. Key concept includes agenda setting, media role in determining important issues, cultivation theory, long term effects of media exposure, and use and gratification theory how people actively seek out media to satisfy various needs. Impact of this theory examines the role of media in society, including its effect on politics, cultures, and social norms, highlighting the power of media to say public opinion we can use this theory in media studies journalism and advertising to understand media effects and then hypodermic 
middle theory. This theory suggests that uh, media messages are directly injected into passive audience, affecting them uniformly without any individual interpretation. Historical context, also known as the magic bullet theory, it emerged in the early 20th century during the rise of mass media. Key concepts associated with this theory are agents a powerful and direct influence of media on audience and not accounting for individual difference in perceptions and in interpretations and applications while largely described today it is critique in media studies and helps understand early perspectives on media effects and influence then psychological or individual difference theory of communication this theory examines how individual psychological processes such as uh, perceptions, cognition, emotions, in, in, influence, communication, behavior. Key concepts include selective perception, how individuals filter information, and cognitive dissonance, mental discomfort from conflicting beliefs, and self concepts how individuals perceive themselves. Then, Influence on communication focuses on how mental states, emotions, psychology states impact how we send and receive messages. We can use this theory in the field of life, marketing, therapy, and organizational behavior to tailor communication strategies. Then, personal influence theory. Personal influence theory examines how personal relationships and social networks influence individual behavior and opinion. Key studies include originated from the 1940s study on voting behavior of Paul Lazar, Sears, and others. Include the two step flow of communication where media effects are mediated by opinion leader who first interpreted media messages and then influence others. We can use this theory in political campaign, marketing, and public relations to leverage influence and opinions leaders to the public opinion and behavior. And then personal influence theory. Personal influence theory I think I have discussed it. Now, sociological theory of mass media. This theory explores the relationship between communication and social structure, examining how communication practices are influenced by influence societal norms. Key concepts include social interaction, social rules, and institutional influence on communication, core ideas focuses on how communication practices shape and are shaped by societal norms and values. We can use this to study in sociology, media studies and cultural studies to analyze communications without within social societal context. Understanding how it reinforces or challenges social norms. And then normative theory of mass media. Normative theory explains how media uh, should ideally operate within a society under specific political and economic conditions. Then, sub theories include authoritarian, free press, social responsibility, communist development, communications, and democratic participation theories. And key aspects focuses on media regulation, freedom of the press, ethical standards and the role of media in democracy. And then mass society theory. Mass society theory suggests that mass media has a powerful direct effect on society and individuals, often seen as a capable of manipulating public perception. Historical context emerged in the 20th century with concerns about media influence on <coughs> public opinion and behavior. Key concept includes the idea of passive audience 
that is easily influenced by media masses and the potential for media to manipulate and control public opinion. We can use this theory in study like media criticism, political communication, and study of propaganda, examining how media can shape societal attitudes and behavior. And the next agenda setting theory. This theory proposes that while media may not tell people exactly what to think, it significantly influences what issues people think about by focusing more on certain topics. Key theories developed by Maxwell, M.C. Combs, and Donald so in the 1970s. Core concept includes media influences the silence of topics of the agenda by making certain topics more silent thereby influencing the perceived importance of those issues and among the public. <coughs> Applications of this theory widely used in political communication, media studies, and public relations to understand media impact on public. And then political economic media theory examines this theory examines how media systems and content are set by the economic and political interest of those who control media industry, and influence media ownership, advertising venue, revenue, and regulatory policies significantly influence media content and audience perception. Then critical view focuses on issues of media monopoly, commercial pressures, and the impact of democratic processes. Then hegemony theory of communication. Hegemony theory explores how media perpetuates the dominance of certain ideologies and power structures in society. Mechanism media content sharply reinforces the status quo by promoting the interest of the ruling classes as universal interest. Then quickly analyzes the role of media in maintaining societal inequalities and setting public consciousness. Then next, two-step flow theory. This theory uh, proposes that media effects are indirectly mediated by opinion leaders who filter and interpret media content before passing it on to. Then developed by Paul Lazarsfield and Iluhu Katz in the 1940s and 1950s, core concepts emphasize the role of interpersonal communication in media influence, suggesting two-step process where media messages flow from media to opinion leader and to wider public. Using in this theory, we can use to study marketing, political communications, and public relations to leverage influence and opinion. And then uses and gratification theory, this theory explores how individuals actively seek for media cities by specific needs and desires. It was developed by Elihu Katz, Jay Bloomer, and Michael Jurvich in the 1970s. Core concept highlights the active role of the audience in choosing media for various gratification such as information entertainment, personal identity, and social interactions. We can use to study in media research, advertising, audience analysis to understand media consumption patterns and how to effectively target different audience segments. In spiral of silence theory, definition, this theory proposes that individuals are less likely to express their opinions if they perceive themselves to be in the minority due to fear of social isolation developed by Elizabeth Noeli Newman in the 1970s. The fear of isolation leads to silence creating a spiral effect where dominant opinion seems more relevant as dissenting voices are muted. This can skew public perceptions of what 
the majority opinions actually is then we can use in political science in this theory we can use in political science to study political science media studies and social sociology to understand public opinion dynamics and then dependency theory this theory suggests that the more dependent individuals are on, on media <coughs> for information the more influence the media will have over them the theory developed by <coughs> Sandra Bull Rukia and Melvin D Pure in 1976 the concept include dependency is influenced by the number and centrality of information is satisfied by the media people rely more on media in time of crisis or social sense increasing its influ influence we can use this theory in media studies to analyze the impact of media on audience especially in context of crisis and social sense and where other information sources are limited and then media business theory media business theory proposes that communication effectiveness depends on the richness of the media used which is the ability of the medium to convey information which is that understanding developed by Richard Eldaf and Robert S. Engel in 1986 core concepts include media richness is determined by factors such as the ability to handle multiple cues simultaneously the immediacy of feedback and the personal focus of the medium richer media is the specific communication are created for uh, complex messages we can use this theory in organizational communications and information systems to source appropriate communication channels for example richer media are research for task requiring detail discussing and quick feedback while learner media like email are suitable for forward routine information in communication and communication theory this theory examines how individual adjust their communication styles to adapt to either gain social approval or create social distance in key theories developed by howard glee in the 1970s the core concept in includes convergence adapting one's communication to be more similar to others in divergence Accentuating differences in communication, and we can use this theory in intercultural communication, social psychology, and organizational behavior to understand and manage interaction. And symbolic interactionism theory. This theory explores how people create shared meanings and social realities for interaction and use of symbols. <coughs> It was developed by George Herbert Smith and Herbert Bloomer, focuses on the role of language and symbols in shaping social interactions and individual identities. He has been sociology, communication studies, and social psychology, discussing how many are constructed and maintained. And then, this art theory, this theory explores how creativeness. Functions as actions and how they can accomplish their work. Functions in communication. The global J. L. Austin further explained the zone theory. Third concept includes look the scenery at the act of saying something. The look the scenery at the intent behind the statement or per look the scenery at the effect on the listener. We can use this. in linguistic philosophy and communication studies to analyze how language is used to perform action in social this is the last uh, theory 
optical communication theory. This theory explores how determines functions as uh, development of interpersonal relationships explores the development of interpersonal relationships for gradual self disclosure. It is developed by Kevin Altman and Dalma Taylor in the 1970s. Mm, core concept relationship progresses from superficial to intimate levels to sexual disclosure like feeling and onion. An application we can use this theory in study of psychology, communication studies, and counseling to understand relationship development and mentoring. So, I have discussed all the theories uh, related to communication, which is important for uh, to understand the communication process much better. So, in the next lectures I will discuss about the model of communication, different model of communication that was given by the uh, most important personalities like Aristotle, Kenan etc. So thank you so much for watching this video.